Good. No, sir. Okay. All right. Appreciate everyone. We'll start the committee, the finance committee meeting. Uh, I know the agenda looks kind of simple, but it's, it's a little more detailed than that. And, and we passed out some stuff in the vision in just a few minutes. Uh, the item on the agenda says 2021 capital outlay and then other stuff. Uh, anything in particular, Assessor, that you want to address? Um, well, um, I think uh, what everybody was kind of wanting to know from me was the dollar amount that we're looking at as to what do we have in addition to the already adopted budget that can we can move forward projects with. And the dollar amount that I came up with was around two and a half, three million dollars. The roofing projects that has already been approved are going to all be covered through lottery funds. So that is not included in that two and a half three million dollars and how I arrived at that figure is looking at all the expectations of keeping five million dollars in reserve for the capital needs projects once we're ready to start with that um, also keeping uh, enough funds for emergency reasons and also part of the capital needs 15 million dollar grant we receive will no longer receive uh, lottery allocation so we also want to have some reserve for those five years that we don't receive lottery funds. So that's where those numbers came from. So you said theoretically between two and a half to $3 million. That, uh, I know we're in almost in March. Is, so that, would that, is that just for the remainder of this year? I know our fiscal year. That's just for the remainder of this year. But if we, but if we, if we get into the discussion that we need to go to, Say we say we're going to take out a million and do whatever, and we allocate some other, then that would go into next year's budget. Those or? funds could transfer into next year's. Yes, they could transfer into next year's budget. Okay. All right. Let's we'll start. Mr. Ernie, Mr. Ernie's here. Uh -huh. Hammonds and uh, Robert, and and the guy to, uh, <coughs> Tay Leach is on the committee. Brenda's on the committee. Terry's on the committee. We've got Henry and we've got John, just for reference. Mr. Uh, Ernie, we won't try to keep everybody a long time but we, so we can get into the nuts and bolts and what we need to do. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board and distinguished guests, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, do you wish to start on our roofing upgrade first? Does everyone have a copy of that? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Uh, that actually they're finishing up at St. Paul's elementary today and tomorrow. The work is actually complete. It's just a matter of cleanup and getting their materials off the site. The school beginning on Monday and, um, that job went fairly well, and I'd like to thank the board for taking the initiative to go through this. Uh, look at the whole concept while we were there, because we solved a lot of problems, it, uh, problems that had been ongoing there for some time. So that's worked out real well. And uh, of course, uh, our next move, a priority move is Deep Branch Gym. Uh, if you'll notice that uh, you've got an A and a B, those are the est that's the estimated, but we always like to do an estimate so that we'll know, so Miss Erica can have some numbers to kind of crunch too. But when the actual bidding comes in, it can go less than that or higher than that. Usually it's less than, because we try to uh, use pretty good um, uh, estimates when we use it between us and the engineers and the contractors. And if you'll see that date, that's uh, a real quick date because we got, we, we have actually have to be moving quickly, just like we did at St. Paul's Elementary there. So, that March the 1st, which is actually next week. And um, the bidding will be informal. And uh, that particular roof is already on, uh, he, I talked with the engineer today, the, the metal joists, the bar joists that support your ceiling there, they're all already on a slope. So we don't have to worry about any type of uh, uh, infrared readings or the, um, the core drilling. So that's pretty well cut and dried. So we already got a pretty good take on that. And he says the contractors will be getting a good set of, of drawings so that they can um, give us some good tight bids there. And of course, we got Lumberton Senior High Canopy. 
which is uh, what you see there in the auditorium. The auditorium is, the, is actually where we will begin because that's where your hot potato stuff is at. And mostly around from where I stood, from where most of the leakage has been, it's close to around the, the stage areas. But the whole roof, if you were to get on top of it, I've seen it quite a few times, the whole roof is uh, being replaced because it looks similar to what, uh, if you remember uh, Mr. Brew over at uh, St. Paul's on that gym, um, on the um, cafeteria, it kind of resembles that. So, and that's one of the older roofs. That was one of, that was on the tail end of our prior years ago when the board was issuing so much money. So we never really got to that, one, but uh, I'm glad to see it where it's at. And we had to move East Robinson on up, up because that main classroom, or, or I'm sorry, the main office building where the media center, not the media center, but the um, gymnasium and the cafeteria is at, we've got actual ceiling tile uh, that the uh, water's leaking through the, um, the roof there. Now this particular leak, we first noticed it back in uh, when Matthew came through and then Florence and we tried to utilize the, um, the insurances to help us out there, but they never would on that. So I'm glad that we've come up with the funds to finally address it. It's gotten worse over the years, in other words. And that's the thing about leaks. If you don't attack them and stay on them vigilantly, they'll get worse and worse until we have to actually, under emergency, go and roll with it. So East Robertson has moved up. And also, because I talked with the principal there this week. As a matter of fact, while I was at East Robertson, she called him. In the, um, the uh, I call it the North Classroom Wing, which is adjacent to the cafeteria. Over there, back uh, when Matthew came, or Florence, one of those hurricanes, one of the trees did some damage to the first portion of the roof. So the insurance company would only let us go to that portion. And so they created a far wall and, uh, on top of the roof, and that's where they stopped it at. But now that part of the roof is actually needing to be replaced. And our goal there is to tear it all the way completely down to the substructure and put a new roof on just as the way we did on the uh, first time around. Mr. Chairman. Those two roofs have been moved up because they are, they're getting very critical. And Mr. Hammonds. Yes, ma'am. I would have thought that the cafeterias and classroom would have been ahead of the gymnasiums. Why would they not? Well, at the time, like I said, the cafeteria, it wasn't that bad until recently. It's got worse and worse over time, so it's just moved itself. I mean, I mean now, because you said this is, the, this is the order that you wish to go in that we have? Well, no, ma'am. If you notice, look, okay. at your, look at your bid date. See? March I was 1, looking at that. See, March 1, 15. And see, uh, actually, East Robinson is on the 8th, and, and Knuckles is on the 8th. See, we moved those two up. Yeah, I was looking at the bid date, which is why I said, why yeah, wasn't it yeah. those? Yeah. And the only they would be more important. Like again, the only reason we're doing that is so the work is not coming all at one time, but it's, it's in progression. It's I understand like that. that. I just thought, I just feel like the classrooms and in in cafeterias. It's, they all basically are coming off at the same time. Okay, then. So it's not like that we're putting this in the head of this. So just don't look at that date, Mr. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Mr. Okay. Um, I noticed that Shining Stars is not in here. What is the status with Shining Stars? Well, you know. Out of line. You know, no, so I can answer to the best that I know of. As of, uh, we had, you remember we planned on proceeding with that? Then we come to find out that the ownership of the building wasn't as close as we thought that we were told, you know, at the board meeting. <laughs> so come to find out now, the county, I think, is in the process of doing something because they had pre planned that thing or their, uh, with their monies through FEMA. So I think that's the direction it's going in. I haven't Greg, read Craig, 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 Let me add to that. See, yeah. the, the whole deal with the Shining Stars, we will take it over. Uh, the county is wanting reimbursement from FEMA. The only way they can get reimbursement from FEMA, right. they, have to, they, have to, right. they have to go in and do the work so they can show it's been done. That's right. And if we did it, you would create all kinds of issues with that. So I was told a couple of weeks ago that if they haven't started it, it was like in the next week or so getting started. I know it's taken a while, but they had the group ready to go with it. Once they get all that done, then we know what we're paying. We're still paying. We had agreed for $90,000. That's going to be our portion of that building. Super. The county's the ones taking care of that. Super. Okay. And to piggyback off of what uh, Mr. Lowry stated, one of the mechanical contractors that uh, – was a tap to work on that project with the county. He'd called me not long after he had spoken. 
And he was asking me about it. I said, well, no. I said, we're it's not going that direction. I said, you need to go back to your original source, which was the uh, county of Robinson. So. Go ahead, Mr. Um, WH Knuckles, again, uh, that's only a part of that building. That's why you see your estimated cost around 65K. And to, to go back to what uh, Ms. Farley was saying, if you notice March 8th, March the 1st, all of that really, all of that work is within the same time frame as far as we're concerned. Here's, here's the catch. Our goal this time is to go ahead, bid this out, the contractors get working, uh, just as soon as that's bid it out the following week, then we come in with another set of bids, and then that way everybody can just keep the work going consistently. So they move from one job to another, just like this, like clockwork, similar to assembly line, similar to an assembly line. So that's that's what we're doing that in that matter. Now remember, you've chosen to do bids on each project. You could take you could have technically went ahead and bid it out one project and continuously piggybacked. That that was uh, that was one method, but we've chosen to do it this route. So this is why you see see this. But you normally wouldn't see it this way, but this is why it's set up this way now. My question was because one day had his in it. So um, would the same roofer company be doing all these contracts? No, sir. Okay. Unless unless they're low bid. See, I, nobody can predict. <laughs> I can't predict who's low bid. I mean, you know, that's it's an open. In other words, at each. And each job that's let out, the cop, the builders will be able to bid that project. And Brent, do you have another comment? Well, watching the CD guidelines, CDC guidelines with what they say about classroom and cafeterias, I just want to make certain that our cafeteria and classroom does meet it without the leaks and things being there possible. That's all. Now, what particular school is this general? Or I'm just speaking in general, the cafeterias. I, I was just wondering why the classroom and cafeterias would have moved to the top. That's all. For the bidding process, it's, it's, as far as we're concerned, it's up at the top. Yeah. So the work will start on them first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's okay. Well, it, between uh, Deep Branch will probably start a little bit ahead of it, but it's only a few days, Mr. Brewer. Um, because Deep Branch right now has uh, those large trash cans about this high, and they're filling them with water. So you you can imagine. Okay. How bad that is. And, wow. Um, Mr. Leach, uh, just so the board will know, the last time we had. They opened sealed bids. I was a part of that meeting and I was impressed with what happened and I saw the process of how it took place. So I just wanted the board to know if there's any questions about those. I was a part of it and witnessed that we took the low bid. No, it's reasonable bid. Yeah. Just for the record, now you don't always have to take low bid. I mean, I mean, right. yeah. I mean, low bid might be a yeah. bid, but it's not guaranteed that they're going to. Right. right. Maybe job. Performance is most responsible. Yeah. Responsible. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mr. Ernie. Okay. Uh, so from Knuckles, we moved to St. Paul's High, which is, you see the buildings uh, located there, the RTC building, the cafeteria building, the dressing room, and uh, those are your estimates there. And the pre-K wing at Townsend, that is something that's needed. So why is there no date on it? Say so, uh, why? isn't there a date there? Because it's, uh, we'll probably, once we get all these bidded out, our goal is to, to bid this section out and then we'll start on those. So probably after the 15th, they'll get started on these next, this next batch of schools that you see there. Okay. And again, think about this. I've talked with Ms. Erica. She kind of likes the way we're doing it because it's just like a school teacher. You know, she doesn't try to overwhelm her class at one time. It's done in, you know, in stages, and that's what we're doing. And that keeps the cash flow for her running smoothly, too. i just like to see the projection time. That's all, because you had it on the others. I understand. Yes, ma'am. I have another beat. Yeah. Well, well, let me assure you this. We're, we're going to stay Johnny on the spot on all of these roofs, because we don't get this opportunity that often. When we get an opportunity to go for it, we go. So, so we're excited about it. Yeah, well, we need, it needs to be done, and the good thing, like Erica says, it's being paid out of lottery funds, so we need to right, right. do all we can. Of course, you see now sweat on that. Now, let me say this. There are some more schools that are out there that uh, 
are probably getting close to the same level of needs as far as leaks as these are, and we're already aware of those. So we're compiling that list as uh, you know, as as we're sitting here thinking. So we've got a big long list of roofs. So don't think because that you don't see it on this paper that it's not known to us. Mr. Hamilton, Mr. Chairman. You had Shining Stars and St. Paul's and mm -hmm. Prospect WH Knuckles. Yes, Prospect. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, you got that's from a prior. Some mm -hmm. schools had uh, had wind issues, damages that was further west. Did we have any in our district at all? Nothing that I'm aware of that was from what we would consider a major wind damage. More, most of ours this time was flooded from the waters. Okay, trying to get us some more money. I understand. Okay. Okay, now no, we have a. Hold on, Chris. Got I'm sorry. Chris got a question. Uh, question. Now, looking at the list we've got tonight, now, on one that we had had earlier list where it had all the price projections, mm -hmm. there's three schools and they might be coming, but they were on the list for different things, and that was Furlong High, mm -hmm. Rosenwald, and Orm. And those so are the ones I'm talking about. They'll be coming as far as that's that next group because we had approved them. Okay. And that's what he done. He wanted to kind of give you an update on what we're currently looking at. Okay. So it will be conscious of your mind where we're going. Mm -hmm. and, and as you said, this next group is coming right behind this. Okay. We're going to go as far as the money will allow us to go. Okay. And we're being cautious and conservative. So uh, everyone knows everything. So as we move, there's no, you know, agendas or things that can come at us that we don't know about. We try to be upfront about it all. Okay. Towns and Middle, the modular classroom, if you'll notice that, the buildings are on order. And the electrical contractor has already started the inside work there. And as Ms. Furby and I were talking earlier, uh, we were coming from the existing service inside. So, right. And uh, that, that will save some uh, electrical transmission costs there as well. Um, these are some items that you probably weren't aware of, but he went ahead and put those on there. The uh, field house, the water heater project, that's complete. This is where these large storage water heaters are at. Of course, Mr. Mr. Leach is looking at me. He, he knows exactly what we're talking about. Those, those tanks were probably there when he was there, and they leaked. But anyway, uh, at, uh, at South Robinson, we done theirs first. Right. And then we, uh, we did Pernell's. We've done Red Springs High. We're currently at St. Paul's High because theirs have gone on the, the lurch as well. And um, that's what we're doing. We're putting those instantaneous demand water heaters in, so we're not wasting current, you know, sitting there heating up a, a water storage tank. That's what you see there. The heat on demand. Those yes, sir. Heat on demand, as as it's called, they, they will heat. And they're gas. Yeah. They can keep up with the demand. So that's something important for you to know. I know you don't have a dollar amount on there, but I mean, this is kind of incidental, but you know about what y'all spent, roughly? Uh, huh. It could be, I'd have to, I'm be guessing now, but it seemed like some of the, I see so many numbers. I think those numbers are somewhere in the 15, 20,000 range, somewhere along in there. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking somewhere in that range. Adding items one through seven comes to a million seven to 3,500. Okay. So then you got. St. Paul's Middle School batting cage. Batting cage, yes. So that was the last phase. You remember when we relocated that one place that they were using that and uh, built the classroom. So this is our last part of the commitment to, to uh, Locklear in that campus. So, and of course, you see this is the projected install date of that building there for that. Who, who, who's who's putting the building in, Mr. Ernie? I think it was the same uh, construction guy uh, formed uh, the crew that did the building. Woods Construction, I think that's who done it. Oh, Landon. 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 Yeah. Oh, so he's but he's not the build. He's not. He's got the. Is it? He done this because all we did is he gave a price. You know, he was the low bidder on the project, right. the whole project. So right. he went ahead and talked with him on it, and, you know, since he was the bidder. Yeah, I understand. You know, I'm just curious. You remember how big that building is? No, so not right off. It's uh, like I said, I see so many numbers and that's fine. I'm just asking configurations of things. That, just trying to think about these other buildings we've been talking about, you know, when I remember this building here is a batting cage building. It's, it's, it's actually uh, just a. Uh, a uh, middle building that's like so with sides to it. 
and then it's just open, you know, and they got to end. Oh, it's not going to be closed in? It's not in, totally enclosed, no, sir, not totally enclosed. Is that where the concrete's been poured? Yes, sir, that's where your pad's been. Right behind the building. Exactly, that's correct, sir. Okay. Okay, now, while we're at it, do you want to go to your Mid Springs High Athletic? Yeah, that's fine. We can go, yeah. Let me give a little preface on this. You go right ahead, Carlos. You've been a little more involved in it. Mid Springs High School Athletic Complex. It's for the new board members and the ones that uh, we approved this project years ago uh, with prior board members and actually had a groundbreaking everything. But that's about the same time we got that $2 million deficit. I, you know, the board member logistically, I couldn't really see pushing it any further. But based on what Ms. Eric is saying, and we got a little bit of money, and we made a commitment, it's been voted on before. I'd like to uh, like to get started again if we could. What we're looking at, we actually had, we actually because of, we had that thing rebid back in '19 or somewhere around there. <laughs> So talked with Jonathan Locklear and them and, and Robbie and had them to go out and bid it again. And these are the bids, uh, as y'all can see across the top, the three, three uh, see the names of the companies. This is going there and clearing out the lot and, and getting it graded and getting it prepped and uh, go, so to speak. And as you can see, uh, the lowest bid, uh, I reckon I can get the number, can I, Mr. Ernie? Uh, yeah, these bids are already um, open, yes, sir. 588, 20, that includes everything you see. That's mobilization, demobilization, and erosion control measures, clearing and grubbing, and rough grade and stabilizing the site. So that would be the next one of the steps. So, me personally, I'd like to I'd like to get at least get this done, if not get some or appropriate a little bit more money this year or whatever. And Mr. Speaker, I'm not on the finance committee, but it would be hard for me to understand how we can progress with these other things. And we made this commitment and we hadn't fulfilled it when it's the fastest growing in of the county. Um, I think this should take priority, whether it be one or two or three. You know, I think it should be on priority high on the list. Yeah. What, Ray Springs? Here. So this is essentially just like doing the prep work and yeah, this is getting it ready, right? Yeah, so to clear okay. the land, you got to clear all those trees. You remember there's a wooded lot there and that's that's why you see this cost yeah, yeah. on heavy equipment. It's got to be done there. The money. Okay, so um, my question is, you know, if we don't go ahead and move forward on doing the rest of it, how, how long do you think this will, you know, what do you think the shelf life on this will be? If we don't have, you know what I mean, a plan in place to go ahead and finish it out. Well, we got a plan. Yeah, we got a plan. And the plan, has the plan has been developed. Yeah. Been. I, what I, I should have. I reckon the main thing is how much you want to, how much you want to. Stand. Commit. You know, how much you want to say, you know, if it's two million to three million and you say, you know, you want to put two million in and start this year and, and, and uh, start working on the, the uh, concession stand and the dugouts and everything. Or, um, I'll tell you how this ends. Um, I would just like to know the what what is the overall plan? Are we just putting the softball, baseball field over there? What what is the ultimate plan for we we'll know what we what we oh, no. know, what 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 is the plan? I don't think I don't think everybody know what the ultimate plan is. Yeah. Well, we 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 called Robbie Locklear and and uh, Jonathan then back over there, and we I got the plan out in the truck. The plan is the plan includes. The football field and the track and all that, but they, but we told them at this point we got a football field. And I'm, I mean, I'm the board <laughs> represents, but I mean, I understand. You know, the plan now is the two fields: the baseball field, and the softball field, and and the other incidentals that go with it, like the you know, like a concession stand and stuff like that. Uh, but they told us, I'll tell you, in that meeting, they told us. 
you're not saving any money by going there and saying you don't want to put they still when they when they if you go with this plan here and they come in and grade it they're going to grade it just like they're going to put the football hey, yeah i just want to know what's the company there you might as well do all the work but the plan is not to put the football company there that, and they might the practice field or whatever the main plan is to get them the baseball field and the softball field and all the enemies go with it okay you have a question here and i understand you saying you got a plan how much <coughs> How much are you talking total to put everything in place and use the existing football field? Do you have an idea on that? Uh, well, the old numbers were done in 19, and we haven't got a, I don't think we got a plan for all the numbers for. And we were doing it in phases anyway. So it'd be less than a million. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, all we got to do is just do exactly what, what he requested. All we, it's just a matter of them two, the engineers just punching them numbers and, and spitting that out for you and the committee. I can get that done tomorrow if you would like. Yeah. That way you've got an answer to that question. Yeah, I mean, the total plan. I agree. But let, let me just add, and, 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 and I do think something with this, because I, I, way before I ever got on the board, this was a discussion, and let's just go back. You got, again, you got Red Springs, and they, whatever the history was, they have no baseball and no softball field. That, that's, for me, is the bottom line. Right. right. Now, if, if we come in here now, and this year I'm out here, let me kind of touch on this, Ms. Mike, and you tell me if I'm wrong. That big area of land is almost four acres there that's wooded. This would clear that up, and it would level everything out there. This would basically do the leveling and the groundwork, what's got to be done. Okay, then somebody's got to come in and actually make a baseball and softball field. That would be enough to actually make the field. That could be, if you say, a phase two. Then you're going to come in and you've got to do the dugouts and the fence and then the concession stands and all. And if you have that as a phase three in the parking lot, well, you're finished. Now, you know, I definitely think with that amount of money, and there's some other things on here, we could go in here, and this is just me throwing, we could do this part that's on here. And we do this part here and like get some prices. Okay, what will it be to go there and go ahead and fix that field and get the field ready? Because from in my mind, the goal would be if we're going to start doing this stuff now, have it ready where they can play ball on it in 2022. You're not going to play on it this year, but it would be ready to play there in the spring. And because if you don't, you're putting it off another year. Mm -hmm. We could come in here and there'd be money available to get all this stuff done to work, to do whatever with money next year and what we would have here, get some prices to see what it would be to do that baseball, softball field, the fencing. And with Musco Lightning, they do things for us as far as you don't have to pay for that lightning right then. We we outfitted all the schools in the county and did that on a what, 10 or 15 year basis, if I'm not mistaken. And that can be done. But this is the this is the phase one of it that Mr. Smith was talking about, which we had discussed on doing. Right. And I don't have a problem supporting that phase one. Okay. I, I need to at least do phase one. I don't know if you need to put a little few more money in me and they're just, you know, for incidentals. I mean, you know, I don't want to come back here in 30 days. I'd like to get started. We can approve this at the board meeting. I'd like to have, this is the second time this company's bid at the same bid before. They asked Jonathan them, well, and this is our second bid. They're ready to go. They'd like to go tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. They're ready. They just need for us to have board approval. Yeah. Go ahead. I think you know what I think we do need to do something. I think, like you said, it was um, already committed before, but we just need to plan what it was. Like I said it's going to be just a baseball field. We not, we're not moving the football field. I need a, I need a Zach plan, and I have no issue, no problem with. It. Yeah. We we've got the Zach plans, and we did it both ways. Uh, but we did it. We're going to do it in phases. I know, but I'm just saying we need a Zach plan to vote. We need a Zach plan to vote on what are what are we voting on? Yeah, right. What are we voting? On? Are we, you see what I'm saying? What are we voting on? And we're just voting on baseball way, yeah. fields and oh yeah, that's the football field over there. You know, yeah. maybe we we'll come back later on. But what are we voting on now? That's right now. Is, right now is, is to build the two baseball and softball field and the other incidentals that go with it. Yep. Uh, Mr. Speaker, without discussion, I think that when you get, I know this is putting the cart before the horse, sort of, kind of, but whenever we get to the lighting, the switch that we voted on for St. Paul's, 
should be incorporated. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, that should be an automatic. Yeah, I agree 100%. And also, uh, in relation to the phases, I don't know what our our dates is, or if we've established any dates, but like Mr. Craig mentioned, we need to, in all avenues, we should plan a date tentatively as to when we would like to see these fields be used. I would like to see by end of year, we at least have the money appropriated to finish it. Yeah, well, <laughs> we got enough, if we approved the grade and getting it prepped and then, then rebid. Right. Of course, now these people bid it on, these people, these these companies here are bid it on the whole project now. They bid it on like, you know, two and a half, three million dollars or whatever, but, uh, so, I mean, they, I don't know if you go back to say, we're just going to do the baseball and the softball field. I mean, that's what we're going to do. But if you have to, you have to rebid that out to a company or two or three bids. But we talked to one guy and he said that he could build them. But of course, you know, you got to go through the process. You got to bid it. But, you know, if you say we get it graded like in 30 days or 60 days, and then we say, well, we want to put the fields in. Well, still the town of Red Springs has got to do some stuff they still got to do. I talked to the people in the town. They're supposed to Zoning and everything. get across the line and do what they're supposed to do. But uh, if the guys build the field, and they, if they actually sprig the grass or if they lay it outside or whatever, then it needs to establish itself, as y'all well know. It needs to get time to settle and grade. So you wouldn't play this year. I don't, Craig said 22. You, know, you might could play yeah. 21. If the ball rolls fast enough, I reckon. Well, I was also thinking. I'm talking about the spring next year. The spring of next year. Spring of 22, which would be the next season. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and the sooner, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the sooner they can do this part, and the sooner they can get out right. and build those fields. That's right. The sooner you can get a root system of grass and stuff where people do stay off of it. Uh, if it's this summer, this fall, and it builds up a good field. The word then because you're pushing it even getting on it next spring but i think you know if we got it done in some time they could get on it next spring which would be the 22 season that's right i've got my years yes <laughs> I, I i would like to make a motion that we we take this to the full board okay phase one phase one second on this dollar amount here on this dollar amount right here i had no more uh, unless unless you how much more how much more well i was just thinking for you know, usually they do like a 10, 20 percent thing. I mean, I, I don't want a cat to come back here. No. They call it contingency. Contingency. Contingency fund. I mean, Six. what would you think, Ernie? 650. What would you think? Uh, it may already be built into this. Yeah. <laughs> possible. I didn't speak with them on it, but uh, a lot of times engineers, and when they do a design, they yeah. build contingency in their. They do. Their... Well, it's got this uh, undercut, you know. That's, Earth evaluation, you know, per yard, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it's not figured into the main price. It's got this, if we run into such and such, it's going to be X amount per yard. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can go with the dollar. I, I just, we, we, they normally put on for seeing costs in it, though. What do you, what do you, a temp, like, what would you do, a 10% uh, contingency? 10% is yeah. a good number. Yeah. But a 10% 10, 10 contingency. Okay. Every contract I've ever known from working with the county planning, they always build a contingency in it. Yes, ma'am. So, and, and even being on this board, they always did. So, I'm surprised if they didn't put a contingency for us unforeseen things in it. As long as we understand, a 10% contingency, just in case. Yes, sir. That's that's wise on your part. Okay. And somebody second that. Just don't tell them we got it in there. Brenda <laughs> <laughs> says <laughs> fifty-eight thousand. <laughs> fifty-eight thousand. Eight hundred and thirty-two dollars contingency. Okay. <clears throat> All right. You good with that? Yes, sir. Uh, let me let me commend this board for what you just did. The reason, the reason I'm saying that, I've been here pretty long, and uh, Mr. Smith has been a good advocate for his community where he's from. He's worked with this board on other projects. Uh, he went overboard to work with the, the board and building other places in the county. So I think it's finally time that, uh, that what y'all done, y'all done a good thing. So I, I feel real good about what you've done because Mr. Smith has worked well with this board. 
in trying to be on the whole county. So I think well, it's, I, I believe it's, in being fair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> two times. Sir. But anyway, let me get forward now. Dr. Williamson wanted me to look at another problem that we had at Red Springs High School. And we did, and I had the engineers to go out to it on the existing football field. We have a washout. Yeah. And that washout is pretty dangerous now. I mean, it's way down in the ground. So, uh, Mr. Clear and Mr. Evans and uh, JR went out and looked at the site. And I didn't, I didn't have time to get this number, these numbers in your hand, but uh, what it boils down to, uh, I'll give you a quick rendition of it. Uh, this is a follow-up on the Red Spring sinkhole issue. Attached is per as a per eight hour, uh, per hour rate sheet that Jr. provided to cover his cost. As discussed yesterday, this will start out on an exploratory dig until we can identify the problem. Once the problem has been uncovered, then we'll come up with a potential fix. So this is easy to saying this. I suggest if you want to get a number for a PO on this, use the following. Exploratory digging was about two days, 16 hours, uh, $3,600. The fixed problem, approximately $3,600. Material for the fixed, approximately $5,000. And then um, about 20 hours with LL and J to uh, take care of the administration of, of the site from an engineering perspective. So the total would come up to about $18,500. And what that would do is, uh, for those of you who may not be aware, that particular football field was built actually through the run of us, uh, old timey stuff back in the old days. And I think they used it as a fill in over the years and they hauled a certain amount of debris out, but then the, I think the state hauled dirt in and ultimately it became that football field over time. So the former administrators, they, they, they did so much every year working on that until one day it became a football field. So. Chances are we could have some problems underneath that from some settling of something that was probably unforeseen or whatever. So, Mr. Chairman, that's a, that, I mean that's I mean that's that's got to be done. That's a, to be that's a, that's a safety issue. Yes, sir. and that's why the superintendent wanted to make sure that we yeah. when he, he made it a point and said, like, "Okay, we need to yeah. get this." It is a safety issue, but also check with the town of Red Springs because one time they was working on something with that years ago. How did y'all check with them? I'll have I'll have Jonathan to check. Okay, because they I, I recall several years ago I think it was in the 2001 category, and 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 what I'm told is that because our water level is so high, so dirt is washing from underneath, eroding. Uh, but check with the town of Red because we might can save some money. Okay, and that's fine. We can we can do it because we got to do it like Mike said. And also on that on those prior lists we had, Mr. Ernie, I'll get to you in a minute, Henry. Okay. When those prior lists that we had about things that need to be done, apparently there's a sinkhole at Fairmont too. Is yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. And we got quite a few sinkholes. Yeah. We were. And it a little too long. I could go down a list and giving you places where <laughs> probably we could get rid of all that money she just mentioned to us right quick. Yeah. Which I mean, anything like that needs to be fixed. That's my because from I want to be correct. Mr. Speaker, as he was calling out the numbers, I added them to the existing numbers that we just discussed and it's coming out to six hundred sixty five thousand six hundred fifty two dollars why don't what the equipment's there they're doing the work why don't we just go ahead and do it all in one package as far as the sinkhole i'm not sure if the contract on the sinkhole is the same one is okay i think there's are two different entities i think the guy he's using here is the guy that um he does site grade and stuff around, and I, he might even be a Metcon guy. I'm not sure who's, whose company this is, but I'm thinking it's Metcon. We well, pretty good about coming to our, our rescue when we got big equipment stuff that needs to be dug and so forth. But either way, that would appropriate enough of funds to take care of both products. Okay. Okay. Hey, sir, Miss Erica, you may start. You keep up with our numbers now. <laughs> Look at, look at her face. <laughs> okay, now if you would like to, we can go to the Rex rented parking lot upgrades. I think that was one of the uh, <laughs> items. Yeah. yeah. And what uh, Mr. Lockley with LL and J has done, he's done a say, I met with him in the side. I'd met actually with the principal earlier. And then he and myself and uh, a contractor went out and took a look at it. 
And if you look at your last, it shows a, a color code legend. I love that. So the, everything you see in green is existing. Oh, that really needs repaving and re restriping. I think is how he's got it listed there. Now, everything you see in the, the what I consider a violet or a light purple, that is the actual existing driveway. And if you'll notice where the extension comes off of that highway, that's where they, someone in the community or someone, they'd hire someone to go in and just put that the runway uh, 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 parking. So our goal was is to divide this up so we can get numbers on this so we so you as the board can pick and choose and say well we can we can afford this right now we, we'll come back and phase this in it's totally up to you but he would like to get permission to go ahead and get these numbers together for you now everything in the blue is new in other words that would increase the parking in front of the uh, school campus where you see the blue and over to the side is mostly where your school cafeteria personnel parks on that right hand side as you come in off of the green so all you see four blue blocks. That's all uh, considered to be new. What about your bus parking? Is that part of the, on the right green? Yes, sir. You see, as a matter of fact, if you look at the buses, they're already in that. Right. Yes, sir. I know. I heard you say cafeteria workers. Now that in the back that's in green, what's that used for? That's the, that's basically where all the teachers park now in the back. And it needs re from this. Yes, sir. It's, it needs repaving. Actually, when they built that new building there, and I think it's when they um, went around and did most of that. So when you enter the school, it definitely needs it. Yes, yep, it does. Because the eroding is taking place there now. That's correct. So when can we get that done? Ma'am? When can we get funding for that? Because like I said, eroding is taking place. It's just, we have, we have, it's just a matter of, of, the, of you giving us guidance tonight, how if you want to let's go in and let him get crunch all of these numbers, and it'll be broken down. And uh, Miss Erka already says she has some paving money available. So if it'll fit in that parameter, I think you could uh, make decisions. So I need to make a motion so we can go ahead and start looking at this because we got. Uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, we, anything we do will be brought to the full board. I mean, if you want. I like to make the motion that we go ahead and look into trying to get rich rental paid because we got a lot of students that's handicapped and other students and issues that's taking place. Yeah. He, he's going to look at doing it in sections, you said, Mr. Ernie. Is that right? Yeah, right. He'll, do, he'll look at the whole project, but he'll break the cost down as a cost estimate. Yeah, that's fine. And it won't be bitter or nothing. It's just as a cost projection. The only the only time expend would be the engineering cost for him to get it all together, take his time. That's what we need to do. Yeah, because I was there when a parent all That's what he's requesting on this. Okay. Our goal was is to make sure that you as a board as a special things that we could look at it and say, yeah, this is what we need to, the direction we need to go. So I'm making that motion that we do go ahead and look into that for Rick's rental parking. Yes, ma'am. Particularly that front. Yes, ma'am. Second. A second. Oh, thank you. Second. Okay. That's going to put us close to that two million. <clears throat> Which Erica said two and a half to three. Just giving some idea. Now, can well, she's had some. We, that's uh, like Mr. Ernie said. Now she's got some money already appropriated for right, payment. Right, right. We'll just have to see because we want to make sure we carry some over for the, the other project because <laughs> we're gonna have to. Look, it's gonna have to come back up. Go ahead, Chris. I just, Mr. Ernie, if uh, if he could do this to where we meet Tuesday week, and then between then and the April meeting. If he could get some prices where we could have another finance meeting just to see what kind of money you're talking about. Because he's again getting this in phases and he might come in here for some of this year and say, well, we can go ahead and do phase one of this now. Yes, sir. So if he could get us something where we could have a finance meeting and then get it, get something done starting this year with you. Yes, sir. And that's a good point because uh, in speaking with him this afternoon, his biggest hurdle, and it's a hurdle not only for, for him, but all of the people in Robinson County, get surveyors. That's the problem now. It is. Get surveyors, get numbers from. So, But um, he's working on that as we speak, trying to get a surveyor cost estimate too. But that's a part of this because you got to go, like you said, through all the permitting with the state and all that. So. Okay. 
Okay. That's a hard time. We got one in Red Springs I can talk to. Sir. Purveyor. We, I can find Red Springs to look at it. Okay. Survey. Well, you, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Um, the other item I had was something that I, I may have mentioned it to the board. I know I mentioned the superintendent, Miss Miss Perrin. Uh, the two chillers at Pernell, we're going to need to replace those. And um, we're looking at a proposed budget of around $337,000. One chiller size is 170,000 BTUs, and the uh, the second chiller is 110,000 BTUs. And what we had is massive failure of the condenser coils on those chillers. Of course, they were some of the first chillers that we replaced years ago uh, when we were able to get some energy assistance money through pro progress at the CPNL at the time. But we come to find out in talking with the manufacturer that those those particular two models that we have there is, is, is typical with us, would happen to be the very two that they were having problems with vibration. And the vibration is what caused this premature failure of the, the condensers. But um, we've uh, had, we've tasked um, uh, LLNJ to go ahead and get started on the project. Uh, talked with Ms. Erdner, the superintendent, uh, and first spoken with her and talked about the numbers. <coughs> Back with her and see what she can come up with. And uh, based on our conversation together, uh, if we be if we move now, the chillers may have to be built, but they can be built in a in a consistent timeline. So by the time the good <coughs> will be in place. So uh, the actual pre bid was uh, taken care of this week, and the bids will be open on 11 a.m. on Monday, March the 8th, 2021, <coughs> over at our maintenance facility in uh, Matthew Hall. Did you say that two chillers? Two chillers, yes, sir. Both of them's at Pernell Sweat. Both of them's Pernell. <laughs> now, is that is that the most cost efficient way to handle that situation? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to go back with uh, a, a, the same size chip. Well, the sizes will be the same in the same chiller, but this time we're going to ensure that those coils are copper. Yes, um, a lot of manufacturers these days are looking at ways of cutting costs and they've improved on the aluminum but i said i don't want any more aluminum i want to stick with something i know and for example i know if equipment right now is over 30 and 40 years old some close to 50 years old copper core if we go back with the manufacturer that we previously bought from would they work with us in reference to recognizing that they had an issue with the previous chillers um uh, well <laughs> It's been so long, I don't know that it would or not. But they, there are plans that those companies like Train and Courier do offer. And the engineer, when, when I found out about it, I had the engineer to contact that individual. So they've been talking, so I'm not sure of uh, you know the final numbers. And remember, anytime we give you a budget number, the purpose of that is so that Ms. Erica can kind of look at the money and the superintendent right. or the finance committee. And then usually when the bids come in, they're usually under that if we've done our job correctly. Okay. Yes, I'm piggybacking what Mr. Um, Mr. Henry said, uh, Brewer said, um, spending this type of money, we should have something in a place where they come out and service every year or every two years for the lifelong of, of the units and stuff. It should be a plan in place that that we work on and we work on whoever we go with, whatever manufacturer we go with, to put service, a plan in place. Service services. That's what he's referring to. Mm -hmm. You can, but you gotta pay for it. I know, I mean, you pay for it, you're either gonna pay for it now or you're gonna pay for it later. We're, we're putting a whole That's new true. one in like think, we're doing right now. I think we did look at service contracts years ago and it was costing us more, Mr. Hammond, remember, than what it would have been for to have us have employees that was yes. licensed to do that. Let me inf uh, let me give Mr. Vante Leach a, a, a look at what he's preferred. He's got a good idea, but we normally do our own preventative maintenance on the service, which is mostly the coil cleaning. Now, what happened here, Brother Leach, was the fact that there's the coils themselves from the vibration. It looks just like your car radiator. That's what that, these coils look like, and they vibrated over time. And what happened? They start bleeding the refrigerant out of it. And the way we pick up on it is when the oil starts coming out. That's when you know that you got a major problem. So that wasn't because of a lack of service in that case. But we do do our own preventative maintenance service on those. But now let me assure you this, 
There are times when we need to bring in the technicians from their companies, we bring them in at the appropriate time. So that way we do exactly what Ms. Furby is alluding to. We don't waste here, well, it's not really wasting, but we just don't expend excessively here things we can do for ourselves. But when we do need them, we bring them in, sir. And you're exactly right because um, we have to stay on top of this equipment. It's not cheap. Now, one other thing, let me inform you since Mr. Leach has brought that up to show you the, what we do. Those existing chillers, we're not going to get rid of those chillers. We're going to take them to the shop. The time I say that, you know, Dr. Williams is a smart man. I've been watching him. He knows, I mean, he can pick right up on things. But he says, now, why would you want to keep those? I said, well, boss, I said, here's what it is. I said, every one of those condenser fan motors on that chiller costs $1,200 between the blade and the motor. And you got sometimes 10 and 12 motors. So you can imagine. So what we do, we don't throw anything away that we can actually reuse on other chillers because those are not the only chillers we have in the counter. You've got a set just like that at uh, Lumberton Senior. Uh, you got a, a chiller over Fremont Middle. South Rob, I mean, I could go on and on with the chillers. So. Now, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hammonds, with with no new chillers that will take care of the issue of uh, Pernell had that imbalance with the heat and cooling ever going on? Well, that's another problem. That's in the control side of things. Okay, okay. So, and now now you're getting to where you can get into some money. I mean, this is money, but it's not not comparative to what, if, if we were to take this whole entire county and uh, look at every little control issue. I mean, you could spend some money. So what we've been okay. doing over the time is taking care of those individuals that come across. But if money's ever comes available, uh, I'll tell you the, the places you need to look is Pernell's one, Lumberton Seniors your next. Those are your two, I call them city schools. They're, they're, they're a city within themselves. So there's a lot of energy potential savings that we could do there. Because some of those classrooms, before we went out for the corona, some of our classrooms were 50 degrees. That's why I asked that. Which ones now at what school? When, Pernell, at Pernell when you go down. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's because of what you're saying, the controls. It's the old pneumatic system. Pneumatic uh, controls run off of an air compressor. And the air compressor runs 24 seven. So you see, you got 24 seven gigantic air compressor maintaining pressure in the system to uh, feed your controls. They're air controls, pneumatics. So we don't have any money to take care of that right now. Well, we can if we uh, look at it from an energy perspective. Now you're going back to where Mr. Leach is wanting us to look at. Uh, that's a perfect example to look at looking at uh, getting controls to come in and let's uh, uh, save a lot more energy than what we're able to do right now. I just know that when you go down that hall for the, for the nursing hall is to the left side, it was 50 degrees because I stayed out there. I ended up with a flu from out there like some of, the, some of them did. And they were promising we're going to be taking care of the year before, and it wasn't. But anyway, we'll wait till we get some money, Mr. Chairman, and we'll revisit it another time, okay? But all, all I have to do is just find out what area that's at, and I can take care of that. Yeah, because one side, you will bring up those, those spot, those are what I call spot problems. I can take in uh, with existing controls that I can get by off the shelf, I can fix that. Okay, because one side of the hall was hot, yes, the other were freezing. But, but multiply what I just said. I can spot fix that one. I can spot fix every one of them, but look at it. By the time you multiply that, you're going back to the concept Mr. Leach is wanting us to look at, which is let's attack it at one time and, and see, in other words, let's get rid of the pneumatic system and go digitize. Digitize everything, see. Yeah, bring radioactive in there. <laughs> that, that, that big air compressor you got running 24 seven is no longer running 24 seven. And it has to run to maintain pressure to operate your controls. Okay. <clears throat> we got a good a good lesson right there. Appreciate yep. that. Save money and pay for itself. So you're gonna try to get the numbers for us for like Craig said before to meet the numbers. For the Pernell sweat. Pernell on chillers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're waiting on the bids on that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you, I'm sorry. I'm but sorry. you'll try to have those, you should have them before we meet. In March, uh, the the bids will be open on March the eighth. Okay, I think we meet March. On the Let's move forward on it, Chairman. Meet March the ninth. That's good. I made the motion the day before. On it. So you should know those numbers. That's correct. What, Brandon? I made the motion that we move forward for to go to the whole board. It's already going right. They already bring yeah. it to us. It's already in motion. This is. It's already in motion. motion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we have a we we need to make the motion to send it up for the whole board. That's right. That's it. 
is already a moment. The chiller, the chiller been... issue is already being handled through the circuit. Oh, we've already approved it? Dr. Williams and I, I mentioned to him, he says, get up with the Mr. if we had the money in the budget. Now, remember this, that money is reimbursable to DPI. Can, so, can everybody hear me okay? Go ahead. Uh, I, yeah, the follow up on Mr. Ernie said, you know, we already have uh, funding in the budget for major renovations and repairs. So that's what's covering the chillers. So we, don't need, already, make, we don't need to make a motion to move it forward, Ms. Erica. It's not necessary. You could do it for information, but um, we uh, are using what's already budgeted in there for major renovations and repairs. Okay, you're good. I'm good. Yes, it's already okay. covered. In category okay. one for the, in the capital outlay budget. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And that's why Dr. Williams, he, he well understood the importance of that chiller because he says, you know how long, I said, yes, sir, you're right. But I called the engineer back after we had the conversation. Yeah. I told him they were able to speed this process up if we can move now. Right. So once he got that data, he talked with Ms. Erica. And after that, he told me to go ahead and get up with Ms. Erica. And that's how this yeah. has evolved to this point now. All right. So we're good. It's already allocated in the budget. That's yes, sir. And I just wanted you to understand this tonight. That's fine. The finance committee said that you will you know what, what we're up to. Got anything else? Uh, the only thing I want to bring up is why Mr. Simmons is here, the Lumberton Junior High Auditorium. Uh, Dr. Williams and I, uh, he called me wanting to know some kind of approximate time frame on putting that auditorium back in operation. So I gave him an estimated date of two to three weeks. And in order to, to pull that off, we started with our in-house team, Mr. Terry Evans and Ron Davis and their crew. They've maxed out. We are, we're short some of the temps that uh, left us. So I talked with my boss today about getting some temps to come back in so we can get that project moving on a quicker speed. But um, what we're doing, we're doing the design as far as if you if you want to go by and look at it, we've cut this the up front. We've cut that whole cement section out and we're putting a drain line, a French drain in there and it's going over to a sump pump or a big pump, which will be able to keep that dry from here forward. Now, what we found was when this maximum rain came through, there was a crack in the cement and it was coming up like an artesian web. So this thing is flooded from underground. Prior to that, we couldn't find any drawings on the uh, auditorium, the, the breakdown on the stage. So we went over behind in the corner and we cut a 12 by 12 hole. Come to find out that particular stage is poured with dirt all the way up and it's on a cement slab. And then it's got your oh. other forward on top of it. So that, that's the number one stage. You don't have to worry oh, about that. Yes. We're worried after then about the water. But after that, I talked with um, Mr. Childress, with the, um, the gentleman who works with us on our mold and in prevention and so forth. And he said they had a, a, um, an auditorium just like the one at Lumberton Senior out on the coast. And said every time they have rings, they said that's what they run into. So it's amazing that we talked about that. And lo and behold, when we pulled all the carpet out, we saw where the water was actually coming in, it's groundwater. But we discovered something today, Mr. Evans and Mr. Davis, our team, found out that some of the roof drains also are piped under that floor. And they used old timey terracotta pipe, Brother Simmons, so that means it's not connected and in between there, there's a joint. Like so we're doing the right thing with what we're doing. Now, the team that we're doing, we're going to do that. We're going to uh, put the French drain system in, put the catch and all that in place with the rocks. And then we'll, we'll build the pit. And then we'll go ahead and get a, um, a pump in. We'll bring in a contractor to do the piping force on the pump. And we'll bring a contractor to come in and, and redo the cement because you want that cement precise because when we go back with the floor and then the flooring contractor will take care of that. And of course, before they come in, we've got it lined up for Mr. Childress and Mr. Apex, Apex with um, uh, Barlin. Barlin, they're coming in to do the cleaning. Now there was one area beside that place they had to actually clean because there was some pretty bad stuff growing in there. And uh, to piggyback from that one, the, the go with what Ms. Uh, Furby's letting us know, we also had the same thing occurring at Deep Branch. Talked with Mr. Aaron today and his and is starting to, to stink. Now his problem is, there's some foul smells there in other words. Uh, his problem is underneath his stage is open. So all that wood under there can grow bad stuff. So uh, I talked with a contractor last week and he, he assured me that he would try to be there this week to put us a sump up in over there. And uh, that's kind of up under a concealed space. So 
I didn't figure there was no way we could get our guys in there, so we, we figured we'd, we'd contract that one out. Yeah. Uh, and the reason we're, we didn't contract the one at Lumberton on what we're doing is because we wanted to get some speed on that because we knew that had to get back up and going. And um, the, the point is they're coming tomorrow to address his odor problem. Okay. So we don't need no type of students or anyone in that, any no personnel in there until that's right. eradicated and gone. So that's the procedure. I just wanted to kind of give you an update on those two ongoing projects. So. Sound like you've been busy. Anything else, Mr. Well, maintenance has been busy. I just some I just take this data as it comes to me and we'll we'll work together. So yes, sir, we're wide open right now. We're we're in full control. Anything else on your agenda? Uh I'm thinking that's pretty much it. I mean, I got a lot more I could tell you about. Oh yeah. <laughs> one that we need to let you know about. We had a failure of a larger handler at Parkton on the meet uh the, the office building. And it's about a 15 ton. So we priced the equipment, the equipment's around 11,000. That's about 10,000 to go with P tax and uh, some change to put one in the records room. So a little split system. So that's the way we're going now. So we, we've got a contract to line up to go in and start cutting that in. And uh, the electrician, he's in the process of going back with another guy who bidded the work for us at. Um, Fermont High. That's the one we did that one over there on that on the D building at Fermont. So it's a, a carbon copy that set on the smaller scale. Okay. So those are the kind of things that we're getting out of the moving target. And uh, Brother Brewer, I will be, if the Lord spurs and the weather don't change on me next week, we're going to be on top of Townsend's roof again, Miss Furby, too. Thank <laughs> you. And you better not fall like I told you before. <laughs> Appreciate that, too. Yes, sir. We, we're almost through there. We just got to get back and get the control. Control. Okay. Gotcha. That all you got? Yes, sir. I guess I'm through. Not great. Uh, Mr. Turner, this might just for information. It's on the list we had earlier. Uh, and you and I touched base today. Mm -hmm. The the toilet situation, and I'm looking at these as low cost. The toilet, bathroom situation. That one's here. complete over here. That one's complete. Okay, that takes care of that. And then the other situation where the old branch, the deep branch. Yes, sir. That's that's one of my next to do list. Okay. So um, that's local as far as we can. Yes, sir. Head in house. Okay. And that that shouldn't be that much of a project. Uh, it just depends on which way the direction the principal wants us to go. So okay. I hadn't had time to actually sit down with him on that. We're some of my guy team members have been speaking with him on it. So. And that's, yeah. that's next on the list. And just for information, I think I mentioned it before, but it was on the original list about some paving at IEA, Indian yes. Education Building. And again, that was looking at using funds that was uh, the school system received from selling land to the university, which the amount we sold it for was 75000 And was to look and see how far that might could go after the university finishes with the project they have. The back of IEA now is kind of just disruptive and they got to you know finish all they're doing and then get all of their stuff cleaned up back there and then it was looking at possibly this was from last year of taking some of that or seventy five thousand, just seeing how far it would go at IEA which would keep us from bringing in other money and having to allot it for that project there but that's just information good to know that's the thing that's on that other list okay mm -hmm. yes sir what I have here yeah okay uh, folks uh, I, I passed around a paper we had, had had some discussions about uh, the weight rooms the metal weight rooms mm -hmm. and the paper that I went around with I don't know if you've been able to look at it but I had talked to Mr. Johnson up at L A N J, and what he's got here on this paper is basically stuff to do before you put a building up or do anything. And he says, these are things that, uh, you know, you just can't go decide where you're going to put it. And I'm going here with it without doing some investigation. And he says all these things that he's got listed here, it might have to be done everywhere, uh, any place you go. Uh, you might get to a certain point and you have to change. but. If you went to the site, let's say you went to St. Paul, and we talked about there, and we've talked about sweat. Let's say you went to these places and said, this is where I want the building. 
Well, when they go and start checking these things, it might be you can't put the building there. And he said, you've talked about different sizes. We've talked about a 50 by 100. We've talked about a 50 by 75. I've heard different things. And he said, you might can't put the size building you want in a certain location. You might have to come back and address again. So his proposal was if you give me the approval and tell me how many sites and where, see what's on the first page at their rate. And he said, we would, the way he left it with me, you know, we would get in and not to go over 30 hours worth of work. And that's what it would cost. We wouldn't go over that. It could be less than that. And uh, if we got over that, we would come back and talk to you. And he's got number one there, and then he's got number two and three, uh, what they would do there. And again, this is just, it's not doing nothing with a building, not getting in with codes with a building. This is just looking at the site and seeing what can be done somewhere. I'll take a question. Would, would, would um, this 30 hours consist of both sites or? Both? No, that, that was the limit to cover. That could cover each site. Yep. That could cover each site. That could cover every how many sites you see. Okay, I just, I just, okay. I just want, okay, I just want that to could cover, yeah. Is that per site? That's per site. Oh. That, that would be per site. And he said it could be 10 hours at one place. It might be 25 somewhere else. Okay, I'm just, okay. I'm not sure how that much that would take until they got there and went to look. All right. Mr. Speaker. Yes, sir. I think it will be valuable to go ahead and do this because if we don't have the land to meet the criteria, um, it will be premature to try to uh, say we're going to spend the money. Mm -hmm. So I think this is this assessment would it should be priority. Also, we need to. Uh, assess where we want to go. Right. Mm -hmm. We know we've been talking another thing about Lake St. Paul, about Lake Red Springs. We've been talking about that for eight or nine years. Uh, and a discussion about Pernell. I don't know about Fairmont. I don't know if Fairmont needs extension. I think all the high schools are going to need extensions and stuff. When uh, when stuff were built, you know, they have envisioned 30, 40 people in the weight room at one time. They never envisioned, you know, um, sports with uh, with the females and everybody playing in a in the same area or practicing in the same area using the same facility with a multi-purpose use and a cut out down our cost on a lot of stuff go and build three or four instead of one yeah we might get a deal but so you want us to just look at this tonight and that's all I, th I think we should bring it I think we should uh, open us for us to move forward on getting these uh Metal buildings and stuff, we got to do this. I mean, either now or later, I think there's something we, that we need to bring. Well, before we I don't have the money, I don't have a problem doing this, but we need, I know we uh, we need to determine where we're going. Are we going to five high schools? Are we going to? Well, Lumpton just got one out to a, a new weight room not too long ago. I mean, they're, they're going to be on the back burner. If, for, um, like I said, Pernell Sweat looked like they need one. St. Paul's High School looked like they need one. Then make sure we can do the following year. We can do two more. I mean, yeah. but like you exactly. said, we, we can stagger them. But I want I want everybody to get one. If yeah. One high school get need one. one yeah. One high school get one. I want all high schools to get one. Now, would Red Springs need this same assessment? You would have to do this assessment, in my opinion. You do the assessment everywhere you're going to put a building, yeah. any place. Because now this building, this type of building here, the weight room and stuff. You know, you got the situation there at Red Springs. Uh, you probably gonna put it, you know, if you could on the campus. Now I don't know, but again, that's the question. You can say I want this building here at spot A on this campus. That might not be a place you can put it. They might be a boundary problem. They could be water lines under the ground. It could be on a septic tank where you want it. And that's the reason you need these kind of assessments before you go here saying this is where it's going. Can we add Red Springs to that list? Yeah, I think all of them need to be on the list, but the first two we talk about, English is St. Paul's and Pernell Square. Then, right. the, then the reason that we were talking about. Then the next time we come back, we, I don't think we need to get an assessment on all high schools right now, unless, we, unless we're going to say we're building all of them. Well, why did, but if they're going to do the work, I mean, the, the athletic director at Fairmont or Red Springs, they... I don't know where you could build one at Red Springs, to be honest with you. I mean, just me, me thinking. Okay. But uh, I don't, I'm not sure if St. I mean, Fairmont, where their sets, if you might could. But anyhow, they need to assess them all. Okay. You know, even though we might just stagger them, like we're talking about, if we decided to do them. And the good thing about this is, to talking to Erica again, 
this comes out, as long as it gets uh, like a new construction, you might could do that out of, uh... Eric, are you still there? I'm still here, yes. Where'd you say this money might could come out of? Uh... If the plans get approved by DPI and it's considered a classroom, you can use lottery funds, but DPI yeah. would have to approve the final plans. Right. So that would be a plus. Oh, yeah. Well, I said we would get assessment on all of them. Yeah. All of them. All high schools. I agree. All right. And Mr. Chairman, Mr. 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 Ernie, make certain they do the zoning to see if they can do it also. A zoning can be a hindrance also. Well, that would be, wouldn't that be included into the assessment? I didn't see it on here, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah, zoning restrictions. I see it. Yes, I, I want to make that recommendation bring it to the board. Because we want to spend money. Really? Yeah, this it's is See, this print too bright. Yeah. It's on there. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Point. Yeah. Is Eric, you got anything? Mr. Smith, I did want to mention something, um, and it is already another item that's budgeted. Um, I think I've been mentioning for the first time in my whole 21 years, we have a good problem. We have extra funds in transportation. So uh, we have, there's long been a need for a replacement wrecker. So there's funds within that budget to move forward with um, contracting with the state and getting that wrecker um, in place for buses. And the total cost is close to 187000 and our portion would be a little over 102000 And And um, we've decided to move forward with that, but that is already budgeted in the 6550 purpose function of the state budget that um, the board's Those already approved. Okay. Move forward. Mr. So we have a record? We have one. It's very old. Oh, I, I didn't know we had one. Yeah, we got oh, you talking about the bus record? Yeah. Yeah, I was what I was fixing to make mention of. Make the motion to move they, forward. With the it. one that we have now does not. It's not in the weight limit. It doesn't work, it work. Uh, properly with the newer well, bus. Hook, even if it worked, and they hook a bus to it, it picks the front wheels off the ground. Yeah, and that's, that's correct. That's out of limits. That's a. That's a, if we got stopped by a wayman, we could be majorly fined. Right. That's great. We don't have to prove that, Brenda. She says it's in the budget. Well, if we do. It's already in the budget. Let's move to Erica. Anything else, Ms. Eric? No, sir. Anybody got anything else to under the other? Craig? I got one thing. You know, we're going to come back here asking for a bunch of different prices and costs for things. Uh, that's what we request and where we don't have final costs. So when we get those costs, then we're still looking at what's going on at Red Springs with the ball field there. But also I'd like to just keep it in the back of our minds not to forget the tracks because that track thing can be a situation like the ball fields at Red Springs that we started it four years ago and now it got put on the back burner. So just keep it in the back of our mind when we get these figures and Erica and Ms. Erica says, okay, we got the 2.5 or what do we have? Is there anything we can do with the track this year? Could we do one? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, just to keep it in the back of the mind, not to say I mean, we did St. Paul's and Lumberton. We know we still got problems with St. Paul's, but I mean, I don't have a problem doing Fairmont or whatever. I mean, it's, what was a hundred and some? What was that figure? One of them was like one sixty, sixty-two. Yeah. So they, just keep it in the back of the mind. That mind when, Erica. when we get to that, get close to the budget end right. of the budget year. Right. May have some allocations that we can shift. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody got anything else? That will. This meeting. Y'all showing up. Thanks, Thanks for the invite. Recommendations at the regular meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cole.